Today, I will be sharing 10 secrets pro barbers won't dare to tell you. And before we get on to this video, I just want to say I'm being completely transparent with you guys because I feel like a lot of beginner barbers get this misconception of the whole game. Now, as a pro barber myself, I'd like to say there's a lot of things happening behind the curtain and it's not actually what it seems sometimes. Now, the first point I gotta make is editing. Now, I'm here to tell you that your favorite barber might be editing their pictures using some kind of software to enhance the look of the haircut. So don't believe everything you see on social media because it's really not what it seems. Like some people might enhance the crap out of their pictures and then like in person you're like, wait a minute. Bruh, like I thought it was like this, but it's actually like this, so. Yeah, don't believe everything that you see on the internet. Don't believe everything you see on social media. It's just a game. And I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing to edit your pictures because if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I edit mine. Well, my editor edits mine. And what we really have to do is make sure everything is so crispy and have that perfect picture in order to actually put it out there. I'm not gonna just take a picture from my phone and just like, Boom. No, everything has to be from coming from a camera to the actual lighting and all that. It takes a bunch to get such a good picture. Why do you pay a photographer when you could actually just use it from your phone? Yeah, to have a better, crispier image of what it is you're trying to take a picture of. Yeah, that's basically how it works. But just know that your favorite barber might be going home, editing all that, and then putting it out there, and then you get inspired, which is not a bad thing. Again, it's not a bad thing. It's just, if anything, you should get inspired because he did all that work just to put out one single picture. Like, it really just makes sense. So respect for every barber out there if you're doing that. Honestly, I would just say as a beginner barber, concentrate on giving very good haircuts and then slowly add the lighting and then everything will come together. I'm seriously just tossing everything I have to you guys today. I'm literally an open book right now because I felt like you guys needed to hear this. Now next up we got time and what I mean by time is that it's not going to take you a couple days or months to perfect this craft. It's going to take you years. This craft is just like anything else and if you want to get really good at something you have to be practicing and stay motivated right? Same thing with barbering. You have to be consistently cutting hair in order to get better. And just like anything else, if you have full attention towards your craft, you will get further than the others. What a lot of barbers don't tell you is that it takes years to perfect this game because of the fact that there is such thing as fading, there's such thing as regular haircuts, there's such thing as cutting maybe even woman's hair. That's just the cutting part. There is no such thing as dying yet. Um, designs, there's perms, there's so much in the industry that you can learn and it's gonna take you a whole lot of time. You're not gonna learn it in a couple of days or weeks and I'm not necessarily saying it's not achievable to do all the above but it's gonna take you a lot of time like I'm not being negative but let's just say you really need to be patient and work towards whatever you want if it's whether you want nice lineups nice tops nice fading nice designs you're gonna have to work towards it for a very long time and it's gonna take multiple heads so yeah Patience. Now the third one I've mentioned so much and that is money. Now I don't want you guys to start thinking negative towards the industry or myself, but this thought of becoming a millionaire from just cutting is a big no. Like it's very, very rare. And I'm gonna explain why, don't worry. So I'm just gonna start this off by if you truly believe it, then it can be achievable, right? Now I'm not saying there's no chances of becoming a millionaire off cutting, but it's gonna take a very long time to become a millionaire from just cutting. Now I feel like this subject isn't really brought up because we all wanna feel like we're balling when we're working hard. Cause I know barbers really do work hard and they stay, they stay in the shop for multiple hours and just every day just working, working, working. But in reality, if you really wanna make money, this is definitely not like a crazy industry to make millions of dollars unless you're a CEO of like a specific company that makes hair products or just some type of machines or you have to be selling some sort of product in order to get something really big in return so yeah now for example if you don't believe me yet let's go over some numbers that you would have to reach in order to become a millionaire from just cutting hair so let's go so let's say we have this barber that charges a hundred dollars a haircut and cuts eight people a day which roughly means he makes about $800 a day, right? He's making $800 a day, working six days out of the week, because let's just say he has a day off. Now he makes $4,800 a week times four because there's four weeks in a month, which will get you 19,200 a month. You times that by 12 and it gets you around $230,000 a year. It'll take you about five years to become that full f***ing millionaire that you want to be from just cutting hair, saving every penny and dollar like if you have no expenses if you're charging 100 you definitely have some expenses from like the shop or the right. chair you rent i don't know light car that you have bills. to car i don't know anything dude it's not ideal for someone to just 
make millions off just cutting hair. And that's what I'm here to tell you guys. I'm being transparent with you guys. You would need multiple sources of income or just another one that is a very big one, but you would need other sources of income, not just cutting hair. Now, fourth, we have barber school and I needed to add this one because a lot of barbers will tell you like, oh, go to barber school and whatnot. But when I say the word barber school, I know out of the top of your head, you're just like, oh yeah, they're gonna teach me how to cut hair. But in reality, you really have to go through barber school because there is a lot of things you need to know about disinfection and sanitization in order for you to go on into the real world so you won't spread like diseases or infections and all that. Yes, they are gonna throw you a machine. They're gonna teach you a little bit of fading, a little bit of cutting, a little bit of perming, a little bit of manicure. I've gone through all of it. And if you really pay attention to your state board exam, there's really one section that they prioritize and it's one of the first ones and it's disinfecting. Now, if you're licensed, you definitely know what I'm talking about because when you get tested, you get tested on how to disinfect everything and that is the most important part throughout the whole test. They don't even care how you cut hair. Like they don't really ask for too much. They ask for like a freehand technique and some clip over comb, but that's basically it. They wanna see if you're clean with your things and that is about it. And for your information, I'm not bashing barber school at all. I think it is something you definitely have to attend in order to be a barber. If you really wanna know how to fade, go to seminars, watch a lot of tutorials and just get online classes. It's really that easy. You just have to watch online, watch videos and you'll just get better over time. Now the fifth one, and I hate to tell you guys because it's so negative and like, I don't wanna come across this subject, but I personally deal with it a lot and that is anxiety. There is definitely problems outside of work, right? Just like anything else. So I'm literally comparing it to like just any other job. Yes, I do love it. I personally do love it and I love what I do, but I'm here to tell you guys that you're going to have to deal with outside problems coming into your work life because when you have a client on your chair and you have five more and you get a phone call like, oh, this is happening on at your house or something like that, or, oh, you have to go do this after and it's not going to be open. You start wanting to rush haircuts and you start wanting to like just like do the outside things or you you it creates some type of anxiety if you're really dedicated because you have to be there standing for 12 15 hours a day like honestly i've gone through those specific points in my life where i'm just cutting from morning to night every single day for like a month two months with no rest day and there was specific points in my life where i couldn't even go to the bank to get something secured because i was so committed to having like this much money throughout a week or and it plays with your head and you start getting a little bit of anxiety because every Everything just gets bottled up like sometimes like I'm not gonna lie there's no time but to just cut hair and make videos for myself in order to get good at something you really have to expand the attention that you give to something right it will create some type of anxiety and I know a lot of pro barbers don't say that but they everybody does have their own personal life you guys see these guys you guys see your favorite barbers as just a superhero or some type of superhuman but no dude they have their problems outside of the actual life and it does create some sort of anxiety that you can't get out of there because you're cutting and you don't want to fail on these people and that's about it and yes just like any other job you could call in in this case it would be like hey i'm canceling i'm canceling i'm canceling but yes you, you could do that right but uh you're losing out on money all right the clients will be fucking pissed if you're booked for the rest of the week and you cancel one day how are you gonna manage to fit them in? Like, it just, it's just so much that you really have to take into consideration that these people have a life and they have a schedule and it's depending on you and it's just so much. So yes, it does create anxiety. I'm here to tell you guys that we are all humans. Anxiety, really big thing, nothing to worry about. It happens to everybody, on to the next subject. Now my sixth topic is enhancements and I know a lot of barbers don't wanna go over this, but it's time to just reveal the truth and your favorite barber probably uses enhancements. I know it doesn't seem like it. They might say they don't, but they do. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I've used them sometimes, not on like lineups and beard lineups and stuff like that. Sometimes I may, it just depends whether they have like really nice hair or gappy hair, it just, it's something you have to put on sometimes, man. Yes, it does take some type of skill to actually put on enhancements, but it's not a bad thing. If anything, some clients actually like enhancements and they're like, hey, you have like that little paint? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I got you. And they leave and they actually like tip you even more if you if you enhance their hair and they go about their day just like knowing that their hair looks fucking dark and nice and hey, fuck it. All right, so I've gone over this one quite a bit before in like one other video, but you don't need 
to the nicest tools. Now, don't get me wrong, the power, the blade, the aesthetic of the actual machine, the way you're gonna grip it, everybody has their own preferences. And yes, you might wanna get this machine. I like this machine, whatever, so-and-so, right? The thing is, you don't need the fanciest tools to create a haircut. Now, if you really think about it, there's two blades just moving alongside each other, and that is about it. That's all Clipper really is. The power and all that is determined what, from whatever is inside, but get comfortable with what you have, with what you like. If you have the opportunity to use one of your friend's clippers and they lend them to you and you really like them, then yes, buy them, but the nicest tools don't give you the nicest fades. It's whatever you like and what you think works the best. But if you do decide to invest in your craft, don't see it as a negative thing because it's necessarily a really big perk to your craft, man. Especially if you're putting in so much time, like I said, you needed, hell yeah, go buy them. Now the next one I have on the list is clients. And what I mean by clients is that clients do not care about you. I'm not speaking for everybody, but I'm speaking for most clients. And if I'm being honest with you guys, they're not like your mom and your dad or your siblings where they really care about you, right? I'm not talking about that kind of care. There is some clients that will bring you food and they will say, okay, you could move me to this certain time and all that. If you do not show up and if you talk to them a certain way that they don't want and all that, they'll leave you. And the main reason reason I came across this subject that they don't care about you is because when you're trying to get a break, there is someone texting you like, yo, do you have time for this? Yo, do you have uh, an appointment at two? Because I need a fucking haircut. And like everybody is just there because of their convenience. And obviously you get some money in return, but they care about your specific type of artwork and stuff like that. But do they know what kind of problems you're facing other than that? Like they don't, they'll hear you out because you mention them. But like, if you just met this guy out of nowhere and like he comes in and he's being just like blunt as hell and he leaves and he comes back every time. And then you tell him like, oh, I'm not going to show up this day. He'll be like, okay, this dude, I'm going to the barber. Like they don't, Especially if you work at a shop and you have like walk-ins, I wouldn't get too like close to your walk-ins, which leads me to my next one. If you have great communication skills, then it can work out. Now, my ninth topic is communication skills. Now, communication skills are very, very important as a barber. And I feel like if you're really timid, there is a way to become a barber and just become a fucking beast. But I say you would have to just like keep up with the communication skills and just keep talking to them. You don't want to be that barber that has their earphones on and just cutting all day real quick. And later is like, you'll never be appreciated as a barber like that. If I'm specifically talking about myself, I feel like there's a lot of people that come back to me because I actually care about how they are feeling at the moment. And I'm basically like a therapist. There's really some clients that you do care about and you're always there for. Communication skills are definitely it when it comes to being a barber like you have to have the skills to just create a topic and then go about that what if you weren't to talk at all you would gain clients because your fades are good and all that but would they really come back like that's what you really got to think and i know a lot of barbers don't mention this but yes you do need communication skills and i feel like barbering really just lets you lose from it the final one that nobody's ever talked about and i feel like i need to freaking say it on camera is mirrors no one ever talks about mirrors ever like i've never heard anything about mirrors and i personally need them now when you're doing a low fade down low right I tend to guide myself off ears. So I'll guide myself off ears, making my first guideline or off people's eyebrows, right? But the thing is some people have like different shaped ears or one's further up than the other one. And it just creates like some kind of confusion, right? If you go about that and you have no mirrors, you will get one side darker than the other one or you'll get one side higher than the other one. It will happen. You need your mirrors to look straight into the mirror for it to be like symmetrical and equal. So yeah. So that leads us to the end of the video. If you did like this type of content or you found anything helpful drop a like subscribe and comment what you thought on all the topics if you agreed you disagreed but yeah that's been it for me i'm Artie blends and i'm out peace